Thank you very much. Uh, as stated, uh, my name is John Landon Lane uh, from Rutgers University. This is a joint project with a number of colleagues, Ira Gang and Myung Soo Yoon. We have uh, done many papers on this particular, using these particular models for a number of different areas, income mobility, and we've been talking quite a lot about looking at poverty and vulnerability, and so this paper is our attempt our first attempt to try and get a handle on measuring vulnerability in, um, in a developing economy. Uh, the last co-author, Senya Katskova, is um, uh, a young researcher who is uh, intimately, um, have int intimate knowledge of the data that we're using, so we've brought her onto the project, and she's been incredibly useful in, in working out what's going on here. So this paper is about... Um, trying to uh, employ a rigorous empirical method to measuring vulnerability um, in the study of poverty dynamics. Um, it's very related to the literature on mobility and mobility indices. Um, and so what we're going to use in this model is we're going to try and predict changes in income distribution over time, measure the size of the economy below the poverty line, and predict its future size, measure the probability that any individual or household, depending on uh, how our data is uh, formed, will fall into poverty both in the short and the long run. So we can make predictions over next period's uh, transition back into poverty or transition into poverty within 10 years, 20 years, whatever. So we can, we can, we can break into short and medium and long run. And I use the word endogenously here. I should have quotes around it because this particular methodology, um, we can actually sort of we can look at the results and see what is the um, vulnerable population. And as we see from the results, I'm going to report soon. That changes depending on the circumstances, as you would imagine. So, uh, and I'll get to that when we um, apply it, uh, talk about my results. Our methodology, we're going to apply to data from Tajikistan. There's a long history of why we are interested in Tajikistan. Um, but we have a panel data set for Tajikistan from 2007 to 2011, uh, with three periods, 2007, 2009, 2011. What's useful is the first period is a period of great stress in the economy. The global financial crisis hit pretty hard. The second period is a period of expansion and recovery. And we're going to see quite different um, dynamics in terms of vulnerability and poverty in these two periods, and that's, that's quite illustrative. So we're going to construct a formal measure of vulnerability that is consistent with some standard mobility axioms. Um, so that's nice. It's a nice, consistent uh, uh, interpretation. And we're going, to sort of, we're going to show that the vulnerable set is not fixed. It could be quite a large set of, of the population when times are bad, but it could be very small when times are, are good, as we're going to see. So we're going to make that distinction. So the next few slides, I'm just going to briefly describe our model that we're going to use. It's fairly atheoretical. There's a number of heroic assumptions, like all economic <laughs> models, in underlying this model, but we're trying to keep the number of heroic assumptions to as small as possible. So we're going to use a discrete state first order Markov model of income uh, dynamics. It's a, it's a model that's been used in modeling income dynamics for many, many years. It is, I think, a very natural way to think about changes in distribution. Um, the heroic assumption is the first order assumption, and that's this assumption. Hopefully, I push the right button. Oh, this one. It's this assumption here. If I can um, uh, let pi be the cross-sectional probability distribution of income, all this model says is that everything I need to know about today is captured in last, the most recent period's information. So any past information is not, that, is not needed. That's the first order um, assumption. We're going to make that assumption. Although I do note that 
You don't have to make that assumption if you don't want to. You can uh, assume second, third, and fourth order um, models. I can always reformulate the state space so that it becomes in a first order model again. So everything we do here is applicable to more complicated models. Um, we just haven't found many instances where you need to go past the first order uh, assumption. So we don't. So this, the most important part of this model is the Markov transition probability matrix. And it's a, it's a matrix of probabilities of moving from one class, income class, into another. Okay, I'm going to give an example soon. Um, and so we're going, to def and it's we're going to define income classes to suit our needs. Okay, that's one of the nice things about it. The, the nice thing about this vulnerability index, our vulnerability index is um, in, I mean, uh, impervious to changes in the definition of the income classes. So we don't, it's not that important. We're just going to make the uh, definitions suit our, our needs. As I said, there's a long history of using uh, Markov models to model social and, and income mobilities um, going back to the 1953 of, of Champanown. Uh, Sharks uh, did a lot of work uh, in the 70s on income mobility and the famous paper on the Sharks Mobility Index. Gawecki, Marshall, and Zarkin um, did a lot of work in the 80s about how to estimate this model using Bayesian methods. We're going to use Bayesian methods here for many reasons. One is it makes life very, very simple for us. And then my favorite author and some other co-authors uh, wrote a paper um, which started off our interest in these models. And this paper, we're going to show you a, bit, a little bit later on, um, we decompose sharks as measure into upward and downward movements. And that's very important when we're talking about income mobility and poverty dynamics, where, um, and as you're going to see. So we're going to follow this mobility literature and we're going to define a vulnerability measure that's like a mobility measure that's going to be a function of these um, pro individual probabilities uh, in the transition probability matrix. What are our interesting functions of this probability matrix? We're interested in the limit. Where is the income distribution going? Are we going to get a much higher proportion of people in the, in the, below the poverty line, or is it going to go to zero? That's an interesting, uh, important concept we, we're interested in. This is a highly nonlinear function of the Markov probability matrix. It's the left eigenvalue associated with the eigenvalue of 1. Um, that's why we use Bayesian methods, because we can get uh, distributions uh, for this nonlinear function and get confidence intervals very easy. So that's why we use it. We're going to look at some mobility measures and our measure of vulnerability. Let's go through a very simple example to sort of explain what we're doing. Suppose I broke the income distribution to only three categories, very broad, below the poverty line, somewhere between the poverty line and... Um, in this case, twice the poverty line, which is some people use as the vulnerable population, and those with incomes above the poverty line, uh, above the vulnerable line, so more than twice the income. Then the state of the world is represented by this vector. These are probabilities that any individual household will be in below the poverty line, in the vulnerable set, or above the vulnerable set. Um, and we're going to track that. Um, and so our Markov probability matrix is just going to be a three by three matrix. This is the probability of being poor and staying poor. This is the probability of being in the vulnerable set and staying vulnerable. This is the probability of falling back into poverty. This is the probability of falling back into poverty from the, above, um, the third income class. And so our, the, most, the two most important probabilities in this matrix in terms of our vulnerability measure is this first column set of probabilities. And so we're going to define a weighted average. Um, our vulnerability measure is the weighted probability of a person or a household who's above the poverty line falling back into the poverty line in one period. Okay. Um, the nice thing about this is I could have 20 income classes. I could break this 
distribution into 20 uh, income classes, I get the same number. So it doesn't matter how I break this up. That's the important thing. We can also talk about multiple period vulnerability. So the nice thing about the Markov model is this is the statement of the model. If I wanted to ask what's going to happen to the cross-sectional distribution in five periods or ten periods, it just I just uh, am multiplying the current state vector by the kth power of this transition probability matrix. And let those elements, let P11 suit K be the element of that matrix PK. So our K period vulnerability mobility index, or K period vulnerability index, sorry, is just this weighted average of those elements of the matrix. And we can estimate that, we can get standard errors for that, and we can get confidence intervals for that without um, any, any problem. So how do we do this in this paper? The details are in the paper. I'm not going to go through the gory details. They're not as gory as uh, some other estimation procedures are. We're going to use Bayesian methods. Uh, why do we use Bayesian methods? It's actually very simple in this case. The posterior distribution of the parameters of interest are known, and I can make IID draws from the posterior distribution without having to use Markov chain Monte Carlo. So this is the one example where you can just do IID uh, sampling from the posterior distribution. Um, so we do that. Uh, we're going to use priors here. Are going, priors are very useful in this context because there are times when you might, if you break the income distribution into very small categories, you might have a, a small data problem. Priors are going to smooth out some of the problems you get, and, and if you use uh, maximum likelihood, uh, you run into some, some numerical problems. The priors are going to help us get around some of these nasty numerical problems. But they're going to be, the priors are designed to elicit what our beliefs are, but they're not going to be driving the results here. We can also add covariates, so I can get marginal effects of uh, individual characteristics on this vulnerability index. Okay, it's not done in this paper yet. It was done in an earlier paper for another conference about uh, three weeks ago, and it just hasn't made its way into this paper. But it can be done. It's actually pretty simple, and I think it's going to make a, uh, a nice contribution to the rest of this paper. Okay, so we're going to apply this to Tajikistan. We have a balance panel. Uh, for the three years, as I said, it's a very nice time to be looking at uh, this data because of the fact that there is a crisis in the middle of it. We have a period of a recession and a period of uh, expansion. Um, Tajikistan is a very poor country, and there's a lot of remittances and a lot of mo mobility of people moving out to work outside of Tajikistan and send money back. Um, there are some very big differences in terms of the composition of households, so we get a lot of variability here. It's actually quite a nice um, data set to look at. We're only scratching the surface so far. Um, the headcount ratio uh, is the, the proportion of the population below the poverty line is 46 and 7 cents. So there's a large amount of poverty here. Um, in our study, we're going to use the um, household level LS, MS data set, so we're going to use income and expenditure accounts. Um, total income is total income. It's including uh, auto consumption. It includes uh, remittances, net transfers, labor income. And the poverty line we're going to use is given by the World Bank. It's based on a calorie-based uh, poverty line, 139 sonomi per person. We're going to divide we're going to convert our household measured income into relative to this poverty line per person. And here's we break, uh, we break our data up into 11 bins. This is the people below the poverty line. You see that we've broken up the um, category from equal to the poverty line to twice the poverty line into a, a finer grid. That's for a little bit later on. We're going to try and see where the vulnerable set really is, and then 
two to three, three to four. So these are, everything's in real terms, so we can compare across, across time. The blue line is the uh, income distribution in 2007. The reddish line is what the limiting distribution would look like under the transition that we had estimated. So it looks like things are getting worse in that first transition. In the second transition, things are getting much better. All right, we start off with a lot of people in, uh, in, in poor or in vulnerable, and it's all moving to the right. right. So that's what we see there. So first of all, let's look at some mobility measures. The first column is the Shorex measure, which is overall mobility. You can see that the mobility between the two periods is pretty similar, a little bit higher in the second period. This is our contribution from an earlier paper. We de decompose this into upward and downward movements. You can see the income mobility is all down, or two-thirds down, one-third up. In the second period, it's completely reversed. Okay? So very similar Shorex measures, quite different in terms of its upward and downward components. Um, we look at our vulnerability measures. The overall vulnerability measures are one period vulnerability, two period vulnerability, and five period vulnerability are 0 0.3, 0 0.34, and about 0 0.35. Okay, so that's a 35%, an average probability of falling into poverty in that first period, which is very high. Uh, in the second period, the probability of falling into uh, poverty from outside of the poverty line is much lower, of order of 2%. Okay, so there's this big difference between the two. So. The first attempt at putting covariates into the model, but this is not, these are not marginal effects, but you can look at the difference. There's a big difference between rural and urban. Rural households are more likely, this is just looking at the first period, rural households are more likely to be uh, to, uh, more vulnerable. Um, households with no remittances are more vulnerable. Households with lower education are more vulnerable. These are, you know, um, these are, I'm kicking in an open door here. We also look at informal versus no informal. In people with informal sector activity in their household. So we have another paper where we use income and expenditure accounts to identify households that we think are in the informal sector. So we use that methodology here. We find that being in the informal sector is, a, is, is like a little safety net in periods of um, we have some other papers showing that when we're in a recession, the informal sector activity increases. Those households that uh, moved into the informal sector um, are certainly less vulnerable. How can we use this to determine the vulnerable set? Here are the individual probabilities of falling back into poverty. We can see that around about three times the poverty line, there seems to be a, quite a significant step down in probability. This is around about 0.2. These ones are about 0.35. So if we were rather informally trying to work out what is the vulnerable class here, it's maybe three times the poverty line. This is a very coarse approximation. We could do a much more finer attempt. In the second period, what's the vulnerable set? If I was using 0.3, nobody. Right? Uh, if you're using 5%, it might be. This is a bit weird. I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, we have to look in the data a bit more, but everything's very small here. So, in summary, hopefully I've met my, uh, the buzzer hasn't gone off yet. Uh, uh, this is a methodology we think is going to be very useful. It's simple to implement. As I said, we can now add covariance to get marginal effects on this vulnerability measure, so you can actually start asking questions about what particular characteristics make a household vulnerable. Um, and we, we applied this method to Tajikistan. We're quite happy with the results. We're getting sensible results. I don't think any of these results are going to startle anybody, but um, we think this is a, a useful approach going forward. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, John.